Hi, it's Dave from Megapoints Controllers. Welcome to the blog. I've just finished my least favorite activity of this business and that's ordering the components in bulk to keep us in stock. Um, I see on the news that Boris Johnson is talking about raging a war with China and a lot of these parts do come from China. So I thought I'd try and get a preemptive strike and probably do what everyone else is doing and stock up so that I can keep keep things rolling. I don't think it'll come to that, but you never know. And while I was finishing that, I just had a, a low stock alert ping come through on email. When you order online, um, we're linked to stock and it tells me what's selling and what's below certain thresholds. And we got a ping for the temporary Mimic panel. I don't know if you know this product. It's uh, a few sheets or a few pieces of MDF put together. It has holes for 24 buttons and 48 sets of LEDs, and you can attach a router or a multi-panel or a mini panel to it. And it just gives you somewhere to put all the buttons while you're playing trains, designing a Mimic panel, or you just want something that's cheap and cheerful to get going, and it does work rather well. So I thought, as I have to go and make some, I'll uh, bring you along on the journey and you can see, uh, see what we go through to make them. So come along and hopefully it'll be interesting. A bit more interesting than putting uh, products into envelopes for post maybe. <laughs> come on, let's have a go. Welcome to the laser cutter. It's um, a little bit nippy at the moment. It's two degrees, it's raining outside, the snow's gone. And I've got this machine that we're going to uh, we're going to create the temporary mimic panels on. I did a laser clean yesterday of the mirrors and the lens, so I just need to check the alignment this morning, and prepare the machine and let it go. And I've just cleaned the glass on the top and the side, so you can have a look and watch it work as I freeze myself to uh, bits. So first and foremost, we need to bring the head over let's see if I can get where you can see and we'll just um, we'll just do an alignment check I need more space underneath so I'm just going to lower the base and what we use to check the alignment is a bit of paper tape I had to do a course to do this. I have a certificate and everything. So what we're going to do, I'm going to swap glasses for the ones I can't see through because I need a prescription. And I'm going to put the key in which overrides the, uh, the interlock. So now it's ready to fire a beam. So if I enable the laser and fire a beam, what I'm looking for is a dot in the center of that. So puff, you see a little bit of smoke. It's in the center. Now what I'm going to do is move the, uh, the head to the back, repeat, and I'm looking for the dot to be in the same place. And then finally, I'll move it fully left. Fire it again and bring it back so I can see it. And it looks good. you feel like you missed out hold on hopefully we're still in focus so the beam comes across here goes in through this little orifice here through a mirror and then down through the lens so what I'm going to do let's take the old one off is I'll put this paper on here and what I'm doing is I'm shooting an unfocused laser beam into this now it's a co2 laser so it's completely invisible to the human eye, but you wouldn't half know if it hit you. So I'm just gonna fire it, 20 millisecond pulse, puff, and you can see the effects. You've got a little bit of smoke, a little bit of flame, and the beam hit here, which is close to the center of the circle. Now I'll go back this way, and I'm gonna fire it again. Am I still, yep, you can still see it. So three, two, one, puff, and we've hit the same spot. 
and the last thing I'm going to do is move it back over so it's close this bit you won't see but you'll see the result fire and now I can bring it back and we can just check it can't beat a good bit of fire can you and we've hit the same spot the next test that I'm going to do is I'll put the laser some the um, lens somewhere in the middle of the panel and I'll just readjust the camera I have the lens holder now and this top mirror in the center I'm going to attach that paper to the bottom I'm just going to fire the laser you hear the sound change and that's where the air is now rushing through so I'll grab my little dentistry mirror and I can see the hole is right in the center can I make it so you can Let's move that round This is so wrong, it's hard. I don't think I can show you that easily. Can you, yes, there you go. So you can see the big circle, which the dark circle is the, um, the bottom end of the, uh, the housing and then the black dot in the middle is where the beam came through. Good, so take the interlock off and park the head. In answer to the question you haven't asked me, yes, I go through this every time I use it. So this laser has a vacuum bed on it and it's great for sucking wood down, especially plywood where it's sometimes, you know, based on the, I suppose, the, the change in the atmospheric um, moisture content, uh, it'll warp a little bit or bend. So the vacuum bed solves that for me. What I'm gonna do now is peel up the flat surface. and expose the, the honeycomb that isn't a honeycomb. Okay. Uh, datum. Just bring this back to its normal height. I need to pull the front down for this. Now, this is a pattern that's frequently used, so I don't need a PC, it's already in the memory. There are a few servo mounts or another. So I just have to recall it and go. Here's our sheet of MDF that we're going to turn into a load of temporary mimic panels. Now, the first thing you're going to notice, it don't fit. So what we have to do is using a rather expensive circular saw substitute, is drop this in and saw it off. The tape marks the point so what I'm going to do is just bring the head over and set the focus. Okay, and I want to cut it off where this tape is. A piece of tape over here. It's so much easier without a camera. Select the job. That's another job that's in memory. So if I put the red dot on and do a test, you can see it's going to slice it. So what we'll do, we'll just put the filter on. We do filter all our air and press go. And I'll enable the laser just where it goes on it there. An expensive saw. Now if I've got this right, it won't have gone all the way through. It'll be just weak enough now that I can snap it. Okay. 
If I was patient, I'd wait for the smoke to dissipate. I'm being attacked. So now we have a sheet about the right size. Drop it on, vacuum bed on. Dark, check focus, should be right. Move it into the top left corner. Sorry you can't see. So select the right job. Test it. So this is the area it's going to process. Let's go left a bit more. Test it again. I'm okay that side. I'm okay at the bottom. I'm okay that side. I'm okay at the top. And I'm still gonna go a little bit more. One more test. And now we can close the lid and press go. And it's going to begin by engraving the logo. How does that look? Can you see it? Let's move the camera up. And here's a front row seat. So I think 50 minutes. So you can watch along and uh, tell me if anything happens. Well, that went well. Forgot to attach my microphone. Now oh, it's in place. So we've just made eight temporary mimic panels. These are tabbed, so they'll pop out, but they're designed to stay together, so it makes handling them easier. But these ones, everything falls out and goes into the laser bed. So I'll have to clean it up between jobs. Now, the side of this you don't often see. We're going to bag them. Let's get on with that. I've just run a couple of sheets of temporary mimic panels off, so we uh, all that remains is to bag them and restock them. Another riveting day in the post and packing room. The amount of work that goes into designing these is excessive I would say, uh, particularly the servo mount. It's like, designing the basic mount was easy, but I think I put six times more effort into laying it out, so it was uh, an optimal 
layout on um, for best yield on a sheet of single sheet of wood and it's like with the temporary mimic panels and the MDF the MDF comes in 1200 millimeters which is just a little bit too wide for the laser machine but trim it down and we can use the offcuts for other things So I think today, so far, I've invested two and a half hours into these. The great thing, of course, with the machine is I, uh, I get to press go and wander off. One of the best things I did last year was I put CCTV all over the place. There's a camera up there recording, so they detect motion and record away, but there's one directly on top of the laser cutter looking down. So from my office in the house, I can see the state of a job and see, see how it's going, coming along. I usually have lots of timers as well on my phone, alarms. So especially when I'm making panels, you know, call me back in one hour 40 or something and go and check the job. But uh, I seem to, my life exists on timers and things on your phone beeping to tell you to go and check something but we are quite heavily mechanized here there are three of us working all the time in the business though two of the people like to hide from the camera actually three of us do but we'll just get on with it after all we are all friends aren't we but uh, when the machines are running, uh, I can go and be productive somewhere else. And that productive somewhere else usually means talking on the phone to people, providing support or uh, responding to emails. I think, well, this last second lot we're on, I did about seven or eight emails and uh, printed off all the orders for today, which will go out after. Don't worry, I, I won't make you watch them. Uh, I think it's raining now, not snowing, and it's cold, two degrees outside, so Britain really does have the perfect weather for indoor model railways. I found, looking at lots of photographs over Christmas, the old photos, we, we went through and sorted them, and I found some pictures of me with my first train set. I think I was... 11, 10. It was in Berlin. My dad was in the army. And I had this N-gauge layout that I built. It was Fleischmann, Mini Tricks, and there was another, I can't remember. And it was quite good. I think it was about, I don't know, 18 points on it. All electro, electri, electrized electric um, that's when I learned they were it was N-gauge and it had the surface point motor on it and we my dad bought all this stuff for me and he didn't have a clue but I was a child and it was get me a train set dad and he came back with all these switches and they had two ways of operating you could either tap it down and it would push to make or you could lift it up and it would lock and I learned then that when you lift it up and the point motor goes mm, you're about three seconds away from melting it so uh, that was probably everybody's introduction to solenoid motors uh, they were Fleischmann point motors and it wasn't cheap uh, then again to me it didn't matter I wasn't paying for it but it was fascinating I might even find a photo and stick it up me and my first train set it was fab I just lost so much of my life in that room playing with his train set. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And I could only dream of the days. We're going back now, what was this? 1970, 1971. And you could only dream of having more than one loco on a line because it was all analog. So you couldn't, that technology wasn't there. It certainly wasn't accessible to me. Um, so imagine having a a train set with more than one train on the line. Wow. One day. 
It's a bit like as a as a kid when you you think, oh, one day you imagine a phone with a walkie-talkie in it. I mean, a, a watch, a wristwatch with a walkie-talkie in it. Wow. Let's get all the bits out of this. What you can't see, I'm just tapping these to make the centers pop. I'd rather have them out now than in the packaging. Nearly done. So, all this from an email alert this morning, ping your low, and I can see there were just a couple left. And this is one of those items where you'll sell nothing for a few days and then you'll sell five or six in one day. So. It's the same with servo mounts as well. I think I once had a week where I didn't sell any. And then over the weekend, I didn't have enough. And that's another video, a servo mount. Maybe we could do this again with them. That's probably the slowest thing I have to cut. That'll be the phone. Talk to you. Oh, oh it's the management. Hello. Yes, his lunch is ready. See you later, guys. Thanks. So when I got the call for lunch, I literally dropped everything. Mm, yummy. Anyway, let's finish these. Um, at some point, we'll be taking you to where we manufacture the PCB board so you can see us working away up there. Maybe even show you some of the design process that we go through. So we've um, lots of ideas to show you how we do stuff and what we do. And if there's anything specific you're interested in, well, you could always send me an email. You know where to uh, find the email address. And uh, we'll see what we can do there. But I just thought it'd be useful, given that we're all locked down in the middle of winter, to uh, show you that we're actually very busy, very active, and beavering away behind the scenes. As soon as I've done these last three, I'm going to start on the orders. I'm a little bit behind there today. So I hope you've been beavering away and playing trains. To be honest, I haven't. I don't, uh, just don't get any time. But I am determined to get the Kato track out on this. I'm going to clear it off and just have a bit of fun. Uh, what I plan to do is get the track out, run a train, start hacking it into track sections, add a bit of uh, occupancy detection and track signal, track circuits and signals. And instead of sort of prevent, presenting a video with, um, you know, Dana, there it all is. Um, we'll build it up one step at a time, slowly, and we'll do it together. And uh, maybe it'll give you some ideas for your layout. It's pretty simple and straightforward. That's the beauty of DCC. It does does save a lot. Don't forget, DCC is only two wires. Problem is, it is only two wires, and we want two wires everywhere for it. And then a bit more. Oh, then we want power districts. Then we want feedback and so on. And before you know it, your two wires are lost in a sea of lots of two wires. So that's today's or this morning's production of temporary mimic panels. Now that's a thought, 816. I better put them into stock, hadn't I? Otherwise people will be saying, when are they coming back into stock? Well, they are in stock. There's a couple there, but Best update it. Get all these passwords and then it wants you to do a sum to see that you're human. Ah, right, royal pain. So products low in stock. Temporary mimic panel. Edit 16. Mm. The number 
and now we are back in stock or back up to normal stock levels okay well hope you've enjoyed the blog thanks for watching and uh, i'll see you next time